Well, that was a clip from a TV series called Fight to Survive. Now, a man named Craig DiMartino um, takes survivors in the show, takes survivors back to the flashpoint of their ordeal when it, when it like happened. And so in this show, people uh, share with Craig, you know, the, the point of where they were finding themselves fighting to survive. Now, Craig DiMartino's personal story there, he knows a thing or two about surviving. He was a mountain climber and him and a partner were climbing um, Sundance Buttress in the Rocky Mountain National Park. And he and his climbing partner miscommunicated. And DiMartino then fell, and he didn't just fall 10 feet or even 30 feet. No, he fell 100 feet, and he crashed into a tree on the way down. And maybe you're not aware, but somewhere around after 30 feet, your body hits terminal velocity. You hit about as fast as you're going to go, whether it's you know fit, around somewhere around 50 feet, 30 to 50 feet, or 1,000 feet. You're going as fast as you're going to go, and it's it's not good. So he, he hits this tree, and it probably saved his life. Now, after the accident, DiMartino found himself with a fused back, a fused neck, an amputated right leg, and all kinds of broken bones all throughout his body. And the odds were stacked against him to ever climb again. But here's what he said. Life is 10% circumstances and 90% my reaction. So guess what? Since the accident, the Colorado climber has become the first amputee to climb the nose of Yosemite's El Capitan in under a day. He also is the two-time Adaptive Climbing National Champion and two-time bronze medalist at the Adaptive World Championships. He, was, uh, he also teaches other people um, adaptive climbing, people that are, have different handicaps, and he teaches them how to do what he does and how the disabled can still climb mountains. So DiMartino said, no one wants a bad thing to define their whole human experience. And I don't want the accident to define the whole of my life. I want people to see that I took a horrific set of circumstances and turned it in such, it turned it in such a way as to make it a positive. He goes on to say, anyone can do the same no matter what circumstances they're in. You have to make a choice to do that every day and hopefully they see that in me. I wouldn't change any part of this process because it made me into the person I think I was supposed to be the entire time. Wow, amazing, isn't it? What an inspirational story. You know, guys, we all face hardships of various degrees. I know you probably face some and I've faced some and some worse than others. I, I haven't faced many as bad as other people truly have. But it doesn't matter as much what we go through as matters as much as how we go through it and what we learn as we're going through it and how we can come out better on the other side. Now we're in a sermon series called The Church Unleashed and today is the very last day of our 12-week series that we've been in. And all through the summer, we've been going through the book of Acts. And we started out there looking at those first Christians and how they were infused with the power of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. And then we saw the mistakes of Ananias and Sapphira and how they needed to be honest with God and honest with themselves, and they were not, and that didn't turn out very good. We saw Stephen's bravery, even when he was persecuted and, and martyred. And we saw the amazing transformation of Saul to Paul and how God did that in his life. And then we're even reminded about Peter and the Gentiles and how God began to take this message to people that had no Jewish background whatsoever. So in each and every week of these 12 weeks, we've seen how we can apply what those first Christians went through to our own lives. We can, we can see, all right, they went through this. It wasn't perfect, but they made it through. So our lives, of course, aren't perfect, but we can make it through as well. If we have God with us and we keep doing the right things, we end up where we need to be in the end. Now, uh, this, this first slide I want to show you here. We're really going to talk about the story of Paul's shipwreck. Our sermon today covers the last three chapters of the book of Acts. And for sake of time, we're not going to be able to read all of those today. So I kind of want to go through here and talk about Paul's shipwreck and what, shipwreck and, uh, and the stories in and around it so we can kind of dive in and find a biblical model for us today. Uh, but I do encourage you to read those scriptures, the last three chapters of the book of Acts this week. Uh, they're really good stuff, and uh, we're going to point some of it out here today. Okay, so at the beginning of this story, Paul had been arrested again 
<laughs> for preaching Jesus. He seems to be several times now arrested here in the book of Acts, and he's being transported on a ship. Um, and he's going to Rome, and he's in, you know, he's in what would be northern, what's Israel now. He's got to go all the way around the Mediterranean and go to Rome because he keeps appealing to higher authorities uh, for his case. Now, we, we would do this if we had a, a some kind of a court case. We might go through a low court and then the Indiana Supreme Court and then the National Supreme Court. That's kind of what he's doing here. So Paul has uh, appealed to Caesar. He wants to go to the Supreme Court of, of the the emperor of Rome. And so they put him on a boat. All right, we'll take you there. And the weather is really bad, was really bad for traveling by seas. God tells Paul that they're going to have a storm and a shipwreck. So Paul warned these sailors that transporting him with this weather wasn't a good idea. Well, of course, they don't listen. So they were caught in this terrible storm and shipwrecked on the island of Malta in the Mediterranean. And as if that weren't enough, okay, they survived this shipwreck, praise God. But Paul gets off, climbs his way out of the, the wreckage, gets up onto the land. He's trying to stay warm. So the islanders there, and they build this little a fire for him and the other people that survived to stay warm. Well, a viper, a venomous snake, jumps out of the brush that he's trying to put on the fire and, and bites his arm. Well, the people of the island know what kind of snake it was. They know it was an incredibly venomous snake. So they expected him to just fall over and die. He doesn't because God is protecting him. And uh, just like Matt, uh, Mark 16 says, so so he's protected. And then the people then think, uh, well, he's he's got to be a, some kind of a god that he survives this, this bite. So they think he's one of the small g gods. And he's like, no but I'm here to teach you about the real, true, living God and his son, Jesus Christ. So then Paul prayed for many of these Maltese people. He's, they saw lots of miracles. Some of them came to Christ. And after three months on the island, Paul was then finally transported to Rome. And uh, when he was in Rome, he was imprisoned in house arrest. And uh, that's where the story kind of leaves off. So let's look at the exact verses that talk about Paul's shipwreck out of Acts 27. We'll start in verse 27. About midnight, on the 14th night of the storm, as we were driven across the Sea of Adria, the sailors sensed land was near. So they dropped a weighted line and found that the water was 120 feet deep. But a little later, they measured again and found it was only 90 feet deep. Okay, that's bad news, right? That means it's getting more shallow, more shallow. That means they're headed towards land. Well, in a, sh in a, in a storm like that, that land is going to crash your ship. So at this rate, verse 29, they were afraid they would soon be driven against the rocks along the shore. So they threw out four anchors from the back of the ship and prayed for daylight. They were dragging those anchors. So it would slow them down. The sailors tried to abandon the ship. They followed, uh, they lowered the lifeboat as though they were going to put out anchors from the front of the ship. So, okay, so some people are going to try to kind of escape on this little ship. But Paul said to the commanding officer, the jailer and the soldiers, you will all die unless the sailors stay aboard. We all got to stay together. We're all, we're all in this together. So the soldiers cut the ropes to the lifeboat and let it drift away. And just as day was dawning, Paul urged everyone to eat. You've been so worried that you haven't touched food for two weeks, he said. Please eat something now for your own good, for not a hair of your heads will perish. He took some bread, gave thanks to God before them. They all broke it. They all uh, broke off a piece and ate it. And everyone is encouraged and began to eat. Okay, so that's the shipwreck of Paul from the last part of the book of Acts. Now, we all go through shipwreck times in our lives. It's something we all do. Have you ever gone through a shipwreck time in your life? I, I know I have. And when things are crashing all around you, right, those shipwreck moments, and there, it feels like there's no way to stop it, and you're just being driven along by the winds and the storm. So those shipwreck moments look like different things for different people. Sometimes it's the loss of a loved one. Sometimes we feel betrayed by someone close to us and we thought they were our friend. Sometimes we, we got, get sick or someone around us gets really sick or we lose our job. We go through a bitter divorce or a breakup. You know, those shipwreck moments, they happen to every single one of us. I know I felt them before and they are no fun at all. Feels like you're on this massive 
in this massive storm and you have no ability to control where you're going, what you're doing, or how it's going to work. That it's just pushing you along, that the storm's got control and you don't have control. One thing about those storms at night, they're pitch black, you don't know where you're going, you feel an, an emotionally just drained, you feel in this darkness, and you feel like you have no ability to stop what's coming, and it's uh, not a fun experience. But shipwrecks, see, they happen for lots of different reasons, right? There are times when the shipwrecks of my life are because of my own life, my own actions, my own reactions, uh, things in my own life that I've done, right? Times where I, I dug the ditch and then I drove into the ditch <laughs> that I dug. And there are times when someone else drives the boat and they are the one crashing it into the ground and I just happen to be on it. And there are also times when it seems like life has a shipwreck moment and it's no one's fault at all. There's something that happened and it's no, no one's really matter or fault but you just go oh man here we are here we are in this moment and and one thing we can all agree on though whether we did it to ourselves someone else did it or just happened to us shipwrecks hurt they really do they hurt us on the inside they scar us up and paul the great apostle of god even though he was doing god's will he was not immune to shipwrecks because just because god was using paul that did not mean that these shipwrecks didn't come into his life. So don't be surprised, you and I, even though we tend to be, don't be surprised when these shipwrecks come into our lives. In this case, because of the choices of others, Paul was shipwrecked. The point is shipwrecks happen to all of us. And we shouldn't think that we're special because they happen to us or, or there's something wrong with us because they happen to us. Or even if there's something right with us because they happen to us. They just happen. It's part of the human experience. And we can learn a lot from Paul's shipwreck here about what to do and what not to do in these kind of circumstances we find ourselves in. So these next several points are going to be that. They're going to be showing what to do and what not to do in the middle of our shipwreck moments. Okay, so number one, when shipwrecked, we need to listen. Verse 11 the officer in charge of the prisoners listened more to the ship's captain than to Paul. You gotta, we got to learn to listen. Now, when we're going through a shipwreck time, it's important that as this thing is happening, that we, that we tune in to the voice of God and really begin to listen. There's two really people, different things going on here. You have Paul, who's listening to God, and you have the sailors and the captain and all those guys who are not listening to God. And it's so important that when the ship is crashing, we listen. They were warned this was going to be a bad idea, but no, they didn't listen. They chose to do it their way anyway. And often, right before we shipwreck our lives, there's someone in our life that is trying to help us, guide us, even tell us that the future has some very difficult stuff in it for us. It's like, don't go that way. You may want to be careful that way. And uh, these people in our life, they really care about us. That's why they're sharing those things with, with us. Now, some people are more in your face about it than others, but we still need to just have a listening ear. Uh, I guess there's been times in my life where I have been the person who needs to listen and don't. I've been many times a person who's speaking into someone else's life, but but sometimes they're listening and sometimes they're not listening because it's it's hard to listen in those shipwreck moments. But we don't need to just listen before the storm. We need to listen in the midst of the storm. So many times I've not wanted to listen when the storm is raging. You know, it seems like that's the least amount of time when I really want to tune in. I just want to kind of do it myself and I don't know, but we really need to realize listening in the middle of the storm is probably the most important critical thing that we do in that storm. It makes a difference. In those storm moments, we're not in the emotional right place to, to, to make decisions. We're not in the right place in our minds and our hearts. There's a lot of wind in times like that. There's a lot of voices in the wind in times like that. We need to know who to listen to what we're listening to, and hold on to those words when we do hear them. Those people that speak God's wisdom into our hearts are, are, are wonderful gifts from God to our lives. 
That was what Paul was trying to do to these people. And so when we see someone trying to give us advice, correction, um, point us in the right direction in those storm moments, guys, we got to thank them and, and listen to them because they're really helping us so we don't shipwreck our lives. And when we're the people that are saying things into the lives of other people, they may listen and they may not listen, right? I mean, that's how we are too, right? Sometimes we listen, sometimes we don't listen. But don't think that just because they don't listen that, that uh, you know, that, that don't cut them off. Don't, don't think that there's um, something wrong with them. Just keep loving them. But it is our responsibility to make sure we share all those concerns with the people around us. Okay, number two, when shipwreck, don't just sit there and do nothing, okay? When this shipwreck took place, uh, the sailors all tried to keep the boat afloat. They, uh, tie, they took ropes. We see this in verse 16 to 19. They took ropes and they, they bound them around the ship, kind of just keep that wood together. And so they passed the ropes kind of underneath the ships and they picked it up and they kind of tied it together. They also dropped those anchors and let them drag along the ground. I mean, and they, they even threw cargo overboard and all kinds of stuff. So they, they didn't just sit there and go, whatever happens, happens. Oh, well, I guess we're all going to die. And this is an important spiritual principle. When we are in these shipwreck moments, guys, we go through those times, we got to refuse to quit. Because there's going to be a lot of temptation over you and me to just throw up our hands and not care what happens, whatever. And we need to keep moving forward. We need to keep doing things that help solve the problem and not just throw up our hands in the middle of that storm. It's so easy to be paralyzed in that place, that storm place. Because it's just a dark little hole and all these things are happening around us and we just kind of shrink back into this little sad place and let, it, let the winds drive us along. That's really not a good plan when the shipwreck times are happening in our lives. It's not the thing to do. It doesn't, uh, it actually makes things worse and not better. Okay, number three, throughout the storm, hold on to what God has said. In verse 27, 22 to 25, Paul shared with the sailors a promise that God had given him. An angel comes to Paul in uh, chapter 27, 22 to 25. And this angel comes and says, listen, you're going to make it to Rome. Uh, this, it's going to be okay. Everyone's going to survive. And this angel comes and encourages Paul. Okay, so Paul gets this word from God. So Paul and all those sailors were holding on to that message from God. What a comforting, comforting thing to hear from God in the middle of those storm moments, to have a word from God that we can hold on to. And, and we need to have a, God, a promise from God as we go through the storms of our life as well. A Bible verse that God's given us, something special that someone else has said maybe, and we hold on to that. And we know that's from the Lord in these moments. We got to remind ourselves of these promises a lot when these storm times come. Hold on to them. Repeat them. You know, the idea of Hebrew meditation, Old Testament meditation, was to say something over and over again and kind of just get it in our hearts over and over again. <clears throat> Many times God's going to lead us to a Bible verse. And when you, when, you, when you get that Bible verse, man, grab a hold of it. You might just need to Google it. But going through grief, what Bible verses about going through grief, Bible verses about going through a tough time or losing your job, and then there's a Bible verse for that. When you get that one, man, grab a hold of that encouraging verse. Hold on to it because you're going to need that message of comfort as the storm continues to rage. And many times, rage is longer than you and I thought it would ever rage. <clears throat> one last thing to remember as we're going through the shipwreck is continue to help others throughout your shipwreck. It's very easy when you're going through difficult times, just think about ourselves, our shipwreck moments, but what we really need to do is actually get off that self-focus of our own storm, it's real, but help someone else out. Notice, Paul continued to minister to other people even as this shipwreck was taking place. He was encouraging those other sailors. He was encouraging the captain. He was telling them it's going to be okay. 
On this trip alone, his jailer, the chief officer of Malta, uh, of Malta, and many others were getting ministered to. As Paul was going through the shipwreck, he wasn't just focused on his situation. He was still helping and ministering and sharing Jesus and encouraging other people. Because storms give us opportunities, guys to serve others and shine Jesus when most people would just be self-focused. Even when Paul crawled up out of that wreckage, what did he do? He immediately started to collect wood for a fire. I like that. What a heart of servanthood. I'm not sure I would do it that way. I'd probably just lay there on the beach and cry, talk about how bad my life is and complain about the rain and how it's rained on me for, I don't know, 50 days straight. But despite what happened to Paul, notice he did not stop ministering to other people, even when his own circumstances were pretty rough. Paul wasn't done there, right? He finally gets to Rome. He's put under house arrest in Rome, but he never let that bad situation that he was in stop him. He wrote many of the, of, of the books of the Bible called the, um, the prison epistles. I mean, there's books of the Bible he wrote from prison in Rome because he just wouldn't stop ministering, even though... He was in some really difficult situations. So just like that opening video with Craig DiMartino, he went through so much, but he took the situation he was in and he used it as a way to teach other handicapped people that they could mountain climb and they could overcome their situations as well. So when we find ourselves in these shipwreck times, look for ways to get beyond yourself. We all need to look for ways to get beyond our own pain and our own situation and instead shine Jesus. Because they're going to know you're going through something. When they watch you go through something, but you do it with a heart for God, well, that's a powerful thing. It was the year about 2010 for me. We had a church in South Bend and uh, that we had started, <clears throat> and Misty and I had put lots of our personal finances into that church. Uh, things up in that area basically fell apart economically around that time, uh, started in 2007 or eight, but it really hit in that late season. And so that church uh, had a descent of financial income and the offerings began to just, I mean, they went to, they went to down by down to one fifth of what they were before. And they didn't go down by one fifth. They went down to one fifth. We lost four fifths. I'll say it that way of the income we had. So that small struggling church really began to, 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 to fall apart. And I had this house, I had a nice house in South Bend and the church, then we had to close the church. There was a huge snowstorm the day I was hoping to turn everything around. And so I, I, the house I couldn't, because the church, I was paid by the church, I, I couldn't stay in my house. So I went to the bank and I said, um, I'm sorry, I don't know what to do. I'm I don't have any money. So they were so nice to me. They basically said, we'll take, you paid this much down, Mr. Hyatt, and we'll take this, what you've given us since you paid it down, and we'll just take it off your hands and we'll sell it. And it won't go against your credit. So it's basically as if I rented it. And uh, I'd like to say that I was uh, going through a shipwreck and I was doing a lot of the things that I was teaching here today. But really, uh, I was 35 years old and I felt like a complete failure going through the shipwreck time and I'll tell you let me let me testify to my wife she was the one who really made things happen she never stopped pushing forward she was determined to get things back together for our church and specifically Stark County campus and our family and it didn't take long but within a year or so we were back in uh, the area we now live and we were rebuilding our lives but that was really because of my wife's <laughs> listening to God in the shipwreck that was my wife refusing to quit and throw up her hands in the shipwreck that was my wife continuing to help others and minister to other people in the shipwreck it didn't take long for me to look over her and just be inspired by her and her dedication so I was like, I got to get up too. And I kind of shook off that thing. And I'm so thankful I did. And God began to really turn things around. So sometimes we even need those other people around us to kind of shake us and show us you're in a shipwreck, but you're going to make it, boy. You're going to make it, girl. It's going to be okay. Now back to the book of Acts. 
Some people have noted that the book of Acts ends kind of abruptly and strangely, and it does. But here's what I think that means. I think that means we are still writing the book of Acts, even now, that our lives are a continuation of this book, that we are a chapter way down the line. Now, 2,000 years later, we're still writing part of this book, our actions, our adventures in the Lord, our shipwreck moments are being written down by God and put into the great book called the book of Acts that's continuing to be, to be written. Now, how do we apply this to our lives? When you go through a shipwreck time, number one, listen to the right people. There's people in our lives that God's placed in our lives that we need to listen to. Let's listen to them. Have ears to hear in those shipwreck moments. Number two, hold on to God's promises. God's going to give you some encouragement, maybe a Bible verse or someone's says something to you, hold on to those moments. Those mean a lot when you're going through the difficult, difficult times. And number three, continue to help others. Even when you're, you won't feel like it, even when you don't feel like it, continue to help other people when you're in your dark moments. And it will make, uh, it'll make those dark moments be over quicker and it'll help our perspective to see that this is not what it's about. It's not about what we're going through. It's about being Jesus' hands and feet and helping people in what they're going through and shining Jesus even in the middle of our shipwreck moments. So here's what I want to do right now. I'd like to pray. I'd like to pray for all of us that are going through a shipwreck moment in our, moment, in our time of, of our lives right now. So let's pray if we could. Jesus, help us, Lord, that when these shipwreck moments come over our lives, and many of my friends here might be in one right now, that, Lord, you help us, protect us, watch over us. Lord, I pray that every one of us going through a shipwreck moment, Lord, give us ears to hear your spirit in the middle of this time. Tell us the right people to listen to. There's a lot of voices in the wind. Help us to know who not to listen to and who to listen to. Lord, we pray that in this shipwreck times, that we don't just throw up our hands and quit and forfeit everything, but Lord, help us to continue to move forward and to do the things that we're called to do and take those steps out of our, our little insulated black box that we found ourselves in. And Lord, we pray that you help us to minister to other people, even in the middle of our storms. Help us to see other people and what they're going through so, Lord, we can come up out of our situations by your great big, by the great big power of God and the power of your spirit. We pray all of this in the precious, mighty name of Jesus. Amen.